Right. Resistors. So, I've got some resistors gathered here today. This is a hot plate that I took apart, and you see it's just a piece of metal wrapped back, loop, 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 loop. These corners, it's just going back and turning around. So, it's just a really long piece of metal, and you make a current go through it, and it heats up. That's cool. This is a variable resistor. If you turn the knob that's on the front of it, then you can cause this connect connection to hit a different point, and therefore you're changing the effective length of this resistive wire that's coiled around in that direction in a, in a cool torus shape. And there's what the knob looks like. You'll see these things on a lot of electronics. If you want to vary like the volume of your um, amplifier, then you use that. This is a nice visual uh, tool for resistance. You can see as I slide this to different locations, I can change the amount of this coiled wire that is effective length to make the resistance what we need. Also, this is a fan connected to a resistor that glows red hot when you plug it in. It's kind of like a toaster with a fan on, and you might have these sorts of things mounted in your wall. Turn that on, and it gets really hot in the bathroom really quickly, and so your feet don't get cold. That's nice, right? But it is simply a wire. Oh, that's motor part. This shiny bit here is just motor part. It's just a wire, and when current goes through the wire, the wire heats up. It's, it's uh, well, it's like friction, right? It's resistance to electrical current going through a thing. So while we're on current, I'll just tell you that the <clears throat> letter for current is I because of the eye of physics that's always watching the charges get through, and it's change in charge going through some area. Well, charge going through an area divided by the time it takes for that charge to go. And the units of current are named after the Frenchman Ampere, or as they might say, Ampere or something reasonable, but here we say Amperes. And so some people call current amperage. You might find uh, people who work in the electrical industry calling it amperage. We're going to use the word current in our class though. And then um, a really typical looking resistor looks like this. I don't know how well you can see this, but there are these cylinders and they have colored bands painted on them. These are very old ones, but modern ones would be a little bit smaller and maybe kind of look like uh, a peanut or something. And then you have a wire coming out this side and a wire coming out this side, and they'll typically have three, four, or five bands on them. And that indicates how much resistance the resistor has. And you could look that up somewhere else. I don't want to tell you about resistor codes. It's very useful information to have, and you'll need it for one of our labs, but I don't want to go into it. So what I want to tell you today is that the voltage across a resistor, and by that I mean take a voltmeter and hook it up here, and here. Now you see voltmeters are nice because they don't disturb a circuit. If I hook one up, then all the current will continue going through, if there's a current, let's say there's a current this way, all the current will continue going through the resistor and it won't know the voltmeter is there. So I guess that means the voltmeter has an awful lot of resistance. An ideal voltmeter, in fact, has resistance that's infinite. So if you just hook up a, a voltmeter to a battery, no current at all will go through the voltmeter. Of course, that's not realistic. You can't get a reading unless you disturb the system itself. Ooh, quantum mechanics hint again. But I'm going to say that if there's a voltage between here and here, the current going through the resistor is given by this equation. A really awesome equation. This is Ohm's law. It's also the Latin spelling for the word man, so you might remember it like that if you take Latin. And you can, uh, well, you know the units of volts are volts. Hey, handy. So that's units of volts. Units of current is amps or amperes. And the unit of resistance, well, that sucker is measured in ohms. So this is the last letter of the Greek alphabet in capital. We've seen it already in lowercase, but we're not going to be using it like that here. <clears throat> it is omega. And that is, well, let's see, if we could solve for what an ohm is, I guess an ohm is going to be a volt divided by an amp. So it's one volt divided by one amp. I want you to understand V is IR like this. The voltage across a resistor is equal to the current going through it times the resistance of the resistor. So if I have a given battery, let's say I hook up a battery like this, and I hook it up to a resistor, and I tell you that the battery is five volts. Not very common, but we can imagine it, right? No, let's go to a nine volt battery. That's a lot more common. I hook up a nine volt battery, and this is a, um, hmm, let's say that it's a one ohm resistor. What is the current that goes through that resistor? Well, it's just gonna be V over R, right? Cool, so what's the current? Nine, nine what? 
nine amps of current going through this resistor. And I should also point out which way this current's going. It's going that direction. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, we have a very Irish lecture today. Look at all the color that we're doing. That's all we're going to do. Okay. Um, and there's one more concept I want to discuss. I'm going to kind of go into this idea of resistance a little bit more detail. If you're looking at resistance in really great detail, you can think about the things that give a resistor its resistance. Like if a resistor is modeled as a cylinder of metal, then do you think making that cylinder of metal longer would increase the resistance or decrease the resistance? Decrease. Making it longer, you think that will decrease the resistance? What do you guys think? Increase. I think it probably increased. Check this out. If it's longer, then the electricity has further to go, and so it will be more difficult for the electricity to get through there. So I'm thinking the resistance probably goes up as L goes up, so I'm going to put it on top of this equation here. What about... What about if I label this cross-sectional area? If this area is A, do you think as the wire gets bigger that I'll have more resistance or less resistance for electricity going through it that way? If the area gets wider, then there'll be more mass to the resistor, won't it? More mass to the resistor, I agree, sure. I think it would be less resistance. What do you mean, why? Because like when, in coaster ovens, you have the big wire, it doesn't make a lot of heat, but That's in small right. ones, it makes a lot of heat because it's more energy being given off by the smaller ones. Very good. And if you look at this kind of a light bulb, where there's a light bulb base right here, and it comes up here, and it makes this tiny little wire up here, and there are big wires leading down here, and really big wires that are in your house. These, ga these wires are like typically 14 gauge or 12 gauge or something. Really big wires in your house so that they don't catch fire. But this tiny little wire, also the wire is probably going to be tungsten and have some specifically resistive characteristics to it. But you're absolutely right. If the area gets bigger, the resistance gets smaller. So I'm going to put resist, if I, this is resistance of a resistor, I'm going to put area down in the denominator. It's like trying to drink from a fire hose. No, not just drink, but drink a concrete from Ted Drew's. If you're trying to drink a concrete through a fire hose, that might just work. Probably won't, especially if it's a winter concrete. But in the summer, you take a uh, coffee stir and you try to drink a, drink a concrete. Not even that will work, right? In the summer, it might barely work, but not quite. But if you take a larger thing, you'll have less resistance. And that analogy with water flow, again, we're back to the analogy with water flow, is much easier to understand why a larger area is uh, going to decrease your resistance. It's also, you can sort of look at it like opening up more lanes on the highway. If you've got a larger path through which the electricity can travel, then more of it will be able to more easily travel. I want to define one constant right here, and that's going to be rho, not a density, but a resistivity. Rho is the resistivity resistivity of the material. And so that seeks to take out all the effects of how long the resistor is and how wide the resistor is, and it is a property of a certain metal. Do you know what the best metal is for conducting electricity? Gold? Gold is not. Gold is very, very expensive, and it's not as good of a conductor as something else uh, that you know and love. Copper. Copper. Copper is a super good conductor. Not quite the best, but the resistivity of copper is very small. There's one metal that's slightly better at conducting electricity, and that's silver. And in fact, silver is sometimes used in really, really demanding industrial applications for very low resistance. Um, let's see, resistance of copper is very small resistance. Can you tell me why silver wouldn't be used in a larger scale? Expensive. It's really expensive. You know what's even cheaper than copper? But is pretty good conductor? Zinc? zinc? Yeah, that's cheaper than copper. I think we make pennies out of zinc. Yeah. Super cheap. But, uh, but even cheaper than copper and cheaper than zinc, aluminum. Aluminum is not a very good conductor, but it's fantastically cheap and it's really, really abundant and it's rather light, right? So that's why aluminum might be used. But the problem is, for a given area and length of aluminum, you've got bigger resistance because this is bigger for aluminum. So what you do if you're making an aluminum wire to replace a copper wire is you make it wider. So you'd use a larger wire to replace a copper wire if you're using an aluminum wire. Um, 
you've seen gold contacts on fancy things, right? A nice headphone jack's probably gonna be made of gold. Uh, the contacts on your Nintendo cartridge from 1985, those are made of gold. The reason that contacts, things that plug into other things, are made of gold is because gold doesn't, what? Corrode. It doesn't corrode. Beautiful, but copper is gonna get all nasty green mess, like Statue of Liberty, all that stuff, right? So that's not very good, but what you want is a material, you wanna put a, a good conductor on the inside and then just plate it with gold, also, gold's really cheap if you just plate things with it. So that's handy. Um, and finally, silver is, uh, is the best conductor. We talked about that already, sorry. So <clears throat> this depends on temperature. How do you think that the resistivity depends on temperature? Um, you think the resistivity decreases as the metal gets hotter? I think it's the app. Well, I'll just tell you what it is. You can imagine, imagine, mm, imagine like this. You see the love of your life over here. You suddenly just meet across a dance hall and you're like, what? And so you want to go running over there, across the dance hall. There are two options though. The dance hall is the metal, right? There are two options. Everybody in between the two of you is ballroom dancing nice and slow and organized and pretty like, right? Or everybody's moshing in between the two of you. How's it gonna be easier to get over there? Dancing. Ballroom dancing. Ballroom dancing, nice and slow and easy and lousy. And do you know, do you know whether that's cold or hot? Oh, it's hot. hot. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. And when everyone is moving slowly, that's when it's cold. Psh, you move over there. So they were doing some really cool experiments, and they found that the uh, if they were making a graph of resistivity as a function of temperature, they were getting uh, less and less and less resistance, and then suddenly, well, it appeared to go to zero. It's hard to measure a resistance of zero, though, because that means that you're trying to measure a voltage of zero, because V is IR, right? And if you're putting a current through a wire and there's no resistance, then there won't be any voltage drop across some length of wire. And that's kind of weird, so maybe you're not agreeing that this is exactly zero. This, if it were zero, what would you think you would call that? Do you guys know? Perfect. A perfect what? A perfect conductor, right? Or you might call it a superconductor. A superconductor, the first one was discovered by Onus in like uh, 1910 or something like this. He was cooling things down in his lab and he finally got something around five Kelvin and when, when he got past nine Kelvin with some niobium, just elemental niobium, you know, you're just average off the shelf niobium, he found that the resistance went to zero and you can still take niobium and get it cold enough and the resistance is in fact zero. In fact, I was working in a lab and for 10 years, we set up a current that was going around in a circle. It was in fact going around in a really, really big coil in order to make a magnetic field, but that's another story entirely. We set up this current to go around in a circle and we started it a decade ago and it's still going. And we can measure the amount of the current to the nearest millionth or so and it does not change. It just doesn't have resistance at all. So if you haven't been a believer in superconductivity, maybe that will help you believe because it's pretty awesome. Bye bye.